All right, so this one is gonna be all about something called the target threshold and how it is set up as a way for miners to verify blocks on the Bitcoin network. So you might remember from a couple of videos ago when I talked about the difficult computational problem that is required to be solved to secure a block. And this video is gonna be all about that. So before I start talking about something called the target threshold, which is the next section of the Bitcoin developer reference, you're going to need to know a little bit more about SHA-256 encryption, which is one of the encryption algorithms that is used in the Bitcoin protocol in a bunch of different places. So the SHA-256 protocol is a way we can scramble some data in a way that is super hard for anyone except us to unscramble. SHA stands for Secure Hash Algorithm. And something important to remember about SHA encryption is that it is something called a one-way function. And that means it can be used to encrypt something super easily, as far as computational power is concerned. But for an attacker to come along and get that message back from our scrambled result is going to be orders of magnitude more difficult. That means we can actually keep that scrambled result open to the public. And you'll see that throughout these videos that you can often see lots of hashes that are a result of SHA-256 algorithm. But only knowing the scrambled result is not enough to gain private or sensitive information. So something else that is really important to remember about the SHA-256 encryption algorithm is that it is unpredictable in what the result of hashing some data is going to be. So what does that mean? That doesn't mean that if you hash something with SHA-256 that the result will always be different because it won't. It'll always be the same. But it does mean that we can't use hashes that we already know to reverse engineer new hashes that we might find on the network and want to break into. An example of this is if you take the number 997, the result of putting that number into the SHA-256 algorithm is going to be completely different to the result of the SHA-256 hash of the number 998, and that will again be completely different to the SHA-256 hash of the number 999. These data values have only been incrementally changed, but each hash is completely different. And that brings in the notion of unpredictability in SHA-256 encryption. And it ensures that they can't be reverse engineered by knowing the unscrambled versions of other hashes. So this brings us to how Bitcoin's mining algorithm actually works. Basically, all the miners are competing against each other in something called proof of work. It's a race to see who can mine the block first. The winner of this race succeeds at taking the header of a block and adding some guess value to it called a nonce, such that the hash of both of these results in a 256-bit unsigned integer, which is underneath a specific threshold. So that might sound a little bit complicated at first, but think about it a little bit like this. Imagine we have some data, which is, I like gravy with my potatoes. So if we SHA-256 that, we get this result. It's 69D1 blah, blah, blah. So now let's say we choose our first guess, or nonce, as the number zero. So we add that onto the end of I like gravy with my potatoes. So now we have I like gravy with my potatoes zero. And the hash it produces is 2BCE blah, blah, blah. So let's say that to mine our block, we need the result of this hash to start with two zeros. If we can find the nonce that causes that, then we have satisfied the proof of work requirement to mine this block but it's gonna take a few guesses for us to find the current, correct nonce. Imagine if the resulting hash had to start with five zeros or seven zeros or 10 zeros. Well, actually, the Bitcoin network now requires, as of December the 3rd, 2017, for the resulting hash to have 18 zeros, which is pretty crazy and way too many for our personal computers to handle. So that's why we have mining pools. So this brings us back to the Bitcoin developer reference, so something called the target n bits. The target threshold is a 256-bit unsigned integer, but the n bits field in the block header only has 32 bits of space. So we have to use something called the compact format, which is a base 256 version of that integer, rather than a 256-bit base 2 version. It's base 256 so that we can squish it into 32 bits of space, but we do lose some precision. Now, for some reason that isn't specified in the developer reference, the original implementation of mbits gets some of the functionality of a signed data type with inheritance. But since the target threshold of and header hashes are always treated as unsigned integers, this really doesn't make any difference at all. In fact, negative target thresholds are strictly converted into a target threshold of zero. If that happened, it would take a long time to hash because the nonce would have to cause the SHA-256 hash to be made up of entirely zeros. So in other words, we wouldn't be talking 18 zeros anymore. It would be the entire hash. 
But the Bitcoin software checks to see if it produces a membit's value that would be interpreted as negative. If this happens, it, is, it divides the significant, which you can think of as a coefficient, by 256, then increases the exponent by 1, to give us the same number but in a different way. If you divide the number by 256 and then increase the exponent by 1, you're effectively cancelling out each operation, but you're left with a different encoding of the same value. So the lowest target threshold that is allowed on the Bitcoin network is 1. If the minimum was 0, then essentially there wouldn't be a target threshold at all, and any nonce used in the proof-of-work algorithm would produce a satisfiable hash, and that's really not proof-of-work at all. That would just be giving away the block. Reg test mode uses a value of 0x207fffff, and that's the highest value below the maximum value that can be represented in an unsigned 32-bit integer. They do this so that the proof of work is done almost instantaneously, and that can be useful for testing purposes. So this video has been all about SHA-256 and how the proof of work mining works on the Bitcoin network. Make sure you like this video to encourage me to do more. And if you have any questions, no matter how stupid or complicated, please make sure you leave them in the comments because I will make sure I answer as many as I can. And subscribe so that I can teach you everything you need to know about Bitcoin and altcoin developing.